A full house on board the International Space Station, NASA's new top scientist on the next mission to Mars, and big news from the planet-finding Kepler mission. Those are some of the stories trending this week at NASA. During the second Kepler Science Conference at Ames Research Center, the science community discussed the latest news from the Kepler mission's hunt for exoplanets. Among the findings, 833 newly discovered candidate planets, 10 of those orbiting in their sun's habitable zone, a distance at which their surface temperature may be suitable for liquid water. The Expedition 3839 crew, including NASA flight engineer Rick Mastracchio, launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome for a six-hour trip to the International Space Station. On board with them was the Olympic Torch, which as part of the traditional torch relay is headed by way of spacewalk to Sochi, Russia for February's Winter Games. The arrival of Mastracchio, Soyuz Commander Mikhail Turin, and JAXA flight engineer Koichi Wakata brought the number of crew on board the ISS to nine for just the second time ever. And it's the second time three Soyuz spacecraft have been docked to the station at the same time. At the Kennedy Space Center, NASA's new chief scientist, Dr. Ellen Stofan, met with the media to discuss the upcoming launch of the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution, or MAVEN, spacecraft. The solar wind comes in and actually is stripping atoms off the top of the atmosphere of Mars. And so MAVEN comes in, is going to make the measurements, understand that process, understand what's going on now. That will help us say, what happened on Mars on the past? MAVEN launches from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station later this month on its mission to study Mars' atmosphere. For the first time, a team of NASA and international scientists has a detailed understanding of the effects of a small asteroid impact on Earth. The unprecedented data was obtained from the airburst of a meteoroid over the Russian city of Chelyabinsk on February 15th. Scientists now have established a new benchmark for future asteroid impact modeling, which has implications for the study of near-Earth objects such as asteroids and the development of strategies for planetary defense. The first ever satellite built by high school students is scheduled for a ride to space November 19th from Wallops Flight Facility. The small satellite called TJ CubeSat was developed as a club project over the past eight years by students at Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology outside Washington, D.C. Part of something that goes into space, part of something that's making history, it's just like a really unbelievable experience for, for me and everybody who's worked on it so far. It's quite a student effort in, in investing the initial time in getting this project off the ground. TJ CubeSat is primarily an educational outreach tool. It features a website where the general public can see telemetry and data while it's in space. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov twan.